Don't excite yourself too much. It's just a fake. What did you say? I said, don't excite yourself too much. It's just a fake. Who? Who's a fake? Those grapplers. The only square thing about them is the ring. Oh, them? They're a symbol of the whole town. Pretending to fight, love, weep, and laugh all the time, and they're phonies, all of them. More than anything, persistence and following your initial gut was the big lesson out of this, you know. Um, it was tough to get the film made with Mickey work, and uh, now that's kind of the best thing about the film. And so, um, you know, you got to follow your initial instincts about it and, uh, and trying to understand how something is going to be received, you can never ever tell. And that's the other lesson, you can never ever tell how a film's going to come out. When it's your definite choice, it's your best choice. When you know for certain that this is the person you want in your movie, and this is all the money you can get to make it that way, at some point you gotta just say, okay, let's do it. You know, rather than continue to chase and chase more money. You know, when, when every door in town is getting shut in your face. The Wrestler started, I would say, about five years ago. Um, after we did Requiem, Darren and I were both out in LA, and he was getting ready to leave to go shoot the fountain. And he came to me and said, I want to do a film about a professional wrestler, and uh, I want you to help me develop it. So we just couldn't decide what this, who this wrestler was, what he was about, or anything like that. And, and we did some research, and I, I read some books of wrestlers who started going to some shows. And the one thing we realized is that you know, we couldn't set this world in mainstream wrestling. Um, there was just too many licensing issues, too many control issues. And so we had to figure out um, where to set the story. Uh, then we started to think of it as a period piece before Vince McMahon had organized all the um, territories into one. Um, but we realized it was going to be a low budget film, so that wasn't a possibility. So me and Scott started to go to these um, independent uh, shows uh, that exist all over the country. And um, one of the things that really fascinated us was, you know, these older guys, these people that were our heroes when we were kids, you know. Um, Guys who used to sell at Madison Square Garden, the LA Forum, 20,000, 50,000 people were now working for 500 bucks, uh, you know, a night, you know, in front of 200 people on a good night. And here they are still, re you'd think that they, you know, were retired, that they were sitting on, sitting on boatloads of money, you know, like, like other athletes. And when you, we dug a little deeper and realized that they, these guys are wrestling for, you know, killing themselves for 100 bucks a night in front of 200 people. And, most of them, I mean, I won't say all of them, but most of them are broke and, and they have no health insurance, they've got no retirement, they've got no benefits, you know, and they're just doing this to just stay alive. I was sort of like most people have been with the rest of the progress. I was quite taken aback by it because it's so different from anything else Darren had done, you know. I mean, and particularly from a music standpoint, and I was looking, thinking about it, you know, the three films that we've done so far have been these sort of like, you know, mind fuck head trip, psychedelic freakouts really you know and um, the wrestler was you know it couldn't have been further from that if it tried well the wrestler shot for 35 days uh, we started at the end of January and went into basically the mid-march a big part of how we organized uh, the shoot days was keeping the weekends open uh, in order to schedule our wrestling matches because all the the wrestling matches in the film were actual events so most of the schedule sort of broken up Every other weekend or so, we'd have a, a real live event where we'd stage actual matches with real wrestlers and in between uh, have the matches with Mickey. And then, so those were our Friday and Saturday nights often, and then during the week we'd shoot the other scenes. <laughs>
I really wanted to be open to what was happening in the moment. It was the first time I've done it that way, and it was exciting and fun. And it really worked for the project. Action! Which one of you girls woke me up? It was by the seat of our pants the whole time because we had 37 locations in 37 days. Uh, Mickey's trailer was in this, um, in this trailer park, which was, uh, Darren wanted grass, first of all. He wanted, you know, he didn't want it to be this paved, nice thing with street signs. We found this one little plot of grass. They had an empty trailer. We, there was about five of them. I ended up crawling into a couple that were boarded up, but they were just destroyed. And then we found this one the one that we used, which was perfect, and we dragged it over to this plot of uh, land and set it down and did the plumbing and the thing and just cleaned it and worked on it for, you know, probably a good month. The time approaches that will with due decision make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe. So we're going to find out in a minute. We didn't know how it was going to work with the... Uh, you know, with the live crowd and live stunts, it was, you know, it was dangerous. It was a real risk. Working with really great actors, you can't ever know what they're going to do. You want them to do, you know, what they do best, which is, you know, surprise you. And that's always the best part. And, you know, I got that all the time from Mickey and Marissa and Evan. They were all very, very inventive. Um, they all brought a lot of um, color to their to their roles. And I think that was, you know, bringing, um, you know, casting the right people. So we just have to figure out how to get him to uh Brain Jam. That's the Brain Jam We are in Jersey City at the Acme supermarket. You sure we're in Jersey City? No, we're in Jersey City, buddy. Yeah. Alright, stop trying to rewrite shit. <laughs> Here at Acme with our extreme value buy of the week. This week, get a great deal on Progresso Microwave Soup Bowls. Get two for just $5 with your Supercard this week at Acme. How's that for extreme savings? Darren made a conscious decision on this film, unlike his other films, not to storyboard. And to just be open, along with Maurice uh, and everybody else on the set, to whatever the circumstances were and whatever was going to happen in these real-world scenarios that he had set up. Um, and storyboarding would, would limit the options and the openness to whatever was going to happen, whatever Mickey came up with, or whatever the other people around who weren't actors came up with. Uh, we just needed to always have that freedom and for people to be prepared for everything. Uh, the deli sequences were all real people. I mean, there were actors and then there were real people. There was always a mix. Okay, now we're going to keep going. Let's do the fried chicken. Come yeah. on in. Mm.
We need to clear all of our crew out there. Houston, clear out, clear out. This? Clear Where's out. it going? To the boiler? We shooting now? Yep. Let's do it. We saw Hulk Hogan was a bad guy. That's how long ago it was. And he was fighting Tony Atlas, which you took a picture of me with Tony Atlas. Remember that, pic that big guy? And uh, Hulk Hogan picked up Tony Atlas to drop him on the top rope on his balls, and he missed. And then Tony Atlas pulled down Hulk Hogan's tights, showed his butt, and then picked him up over his head. Tony Atlas, huge guy, and dropped him on his balls. And the and, place went crazy. And Darren it said, went crazy. And Darren said, Dad, you said it was phony. Is this phony? And 20,000 people turned around. Not 20,000. A woman in front a woman in front of us stood and said, yeah, screamed at This is a grown lady. I remember screamed at you. This isn't fake. Robin, Randy. Well, it was a different time in wrestling. Background to your lawns. That's how I'm going to direct you from now on. Background to your your shoulders. <laughs> Move. Come on. Move. Hair net. Hair net. <laughs> this is nothing like documentary filmmaking. Absolutely nothing. Well, this is life, right? This is our life. No, this is not life. This is constructed yep. life. It's doing like a documentary on ties. Oh, <laughs> such an exciting process. Because uh, basically, he's cutting, he's cutting, and he's going to go like this on this side. And then we're going to cut on that to like here. And the blood's going to spray out and we're going to come up on him and he's going to have the prosthetic on and we'll have the blood there. Uh, but the thing I'm nervous about is that the spray is aerated and not like a stream. Yeah, you want it to be like a mist. Yeah, like a mist. Well, actually, if, you, if you're, this is, hold on, your right thumb is, your right thumb. So go, let's see. Yeah, yeah, go like that. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's it. And yeah, now that's it. That's it. Cheese. I quit. I'm out of here. See you later. Good looking. 